Thank you very much, Maria Rosa. And well, indeed, much of music today in, in Europe is indeed audiovisual also. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, I did have a little weak signal uh, for the audio on, on Lynn's presentation. I do hope you can hear me okay. Uh, but may I start by just earnestly thanking our hosts today, the EIF, uh, Ms. Roger Tun and Mr. Andres Ansip for their warm welcome. ICMP is a very proud member of the European Internet Forum. And personally, I always find the events convivial, expert and, and educative. Uh, so I only convey how much I look forward to the next morning we can do all of this in, in person. Uh, before summarizing our position and the rationale at the topic at hand, uh, by way of introduction, my name is John Phelan and ICMP is the global trade body for the music publishing industry. ICMP's members include the majors, as we call them within the industry, more than 1,000 indies, the vast majority of whom are SMEs, startups or sole traders, and more than 54 national associations across five continents and indeed in 25 of the EU 27 member states. Cumulatively, we represent more than 90% of the world's published music, from Billie Eilish to Brahms, from Bob Dylan to Dvorak, from Radiohead to Ravel. Some of our European companies are among the oldest in the world. Petrucci and Schott were established in the 1700s, but our companies are also among the most modern and digitized with Warner, BMG, Universal, Sony, and all of our startup members driving technology such as AI, virtual reality, and live streaming. Among the six primary ways our industry licenses music to the European market are broadcast TV and film, radio, live performance, physical, that's CD and vinyl primarily, but of course, digital. I firmly believe that Europeans, the European digital single market is one of the crowning gems of the European project. We in music appreciate this more than most. For 20 years ago, piracy and disruption saw more than 55% of global revenues wiped from our sector in less than a decade. In response, we digitized early and comprehensively. And today, 445 million EU consumers enjoy more than 67 million musical works, portable and cross-border on more than 700 licensed digital services worldwide. Today, smart radios and cars, AI-driven speakers, indeed the device in every single one of our pockets enables access to the most obscure Sibelius symphonies and the latest hit you may have shazammed off the radio this morning. However, Europe's digital single market remains something of a fragile construction. The reality is that even pre-COVID, the DSM was not yet a rewarding place. Digitizing music is investment, staff and expertise heavy. It could not be further from the suggestion of just casual uploads. Revenue rates continue to be low and much work remains to make digital viable for European business and creators. Therefore, crucial to achieving viability and central to today's debate are fair licensing in every member state, the principle of territoriality and respect for copyright after years of sustained challenges to each. Thankfully, recent EU policy has taken a leading role globally. As mentioned earlier by Mr. Ansip, the portability legislation is already a big step since the debate around this particular topic arose. Copyright, we must always remember, is not a dirty word, despite the deliberate dereliction by some. Simply put, it is the ink on the millions of creators and SMEs payslips across Europe. Copyright is also by definition exclusive. That does not mean that we want to deny people music. It does mean that our creative partners should have their work appropriately licensed from member state to member state. Let me explain. The reasons include rights. Creators must be entitled to a return for their work as, when, and where it is used in each member state. Pricing. Our digital distributors must be able to price ferry from member state to member state to the continuing advantage of all European consumers. For example, monthly subscriptions to Deezer are available currently at 4 dollars per month in Romania, but 9 dollars per month in Italy. No differentiation in service. Contracts. For example, our companies need to be able to bundle music with telcos in various member states so that consumers can have access via their mobile deals. Piracy. Tackling what continues to be a persistent scourge on the creative sectors. If prices rise in those member states with lower median disposable incomes, Studies consistently show so does piracy. Competition. Any conflation of rights or rising access prices jeopardizes Europe's competitiveness on the world stage and in the internal market, industry's investment, which is so vital to continued creative diversity. Such practices, I may suggest, are important for many creative sectors, far beyond music also. We're very grateful to each of the institutions for the opportunities to extensively input on the geoblocking regulation in recent years 
including the recent Article 9 review process on music, software, and books, as mentioned by Prabhat earlier. And we concur with the regulation's core concluded purpose, tackling unjustified discrimination of goods and services. The reasons above outline why we also agree with the exclusion of digital music and indeed copyright protected works from the legislative scope. And we urged caution on the inherent consequences of overextension. To paraphrase a former Irish prime minister, that's okay in practice, but can it work in theory? The post-COVID-19 era will require prudent, evidence-based EU policy making more than ever before. In France today, government projections of creative sector losses exceed 22 billion euro for this year. The German government predicts losses between four and six billion for music and 30 billion for the broader creative sector. We in music are proud to contribute to the European culture and commerce with, with, with all of our colleague creative industries in film, TV, books, photography, journalism, etc. Working together, our investment generated more than 500 billion of Europe's GDP last year and employed more than 15 million people. The digital single market is precious, but it's delicate. We have to shore up its foundations, not roof its potential. So to conclude, all that we in music ask, and I believe I'm very much on terra firma in suggesting that all of we in the creative sectors ask, is when considering next steps, let's ensure to thoroughly analyze where, how, and if that next step should fall. Thanks for your attention, and I'm uh, very much looking forward to the discussion to come. I hope that's within time.